In this episode, we're going to talk about airport traffic pattern entries and exits. We're going to talk about preferred entry methods and alternate entry methods, and also why one is green and one is yellow. And because we're talking about getting into the pattern, we have to also talk about exiting the traffic pattern and how to do it properly. And different camera angles like this one will be used throughout the video to help situational awareness. All that and more in this episode of Learn to Fly Here. The previous video on airport traffic patterns briefly touched on radio communications. The communications you're going to see in this video would be broadcast over a CTAF or common traffic advisory frequency. In this case, the frequency would be 122.7, which can be found here on a sectional chart. Here are two ways to enter the airport traffic pattern. We're going to talk about both, but we're going to start with the preferred entry from the upwind side of the airport on the left. Building off the previous video, the same airport and runway will be used for consistency. As the aircraft approaches the airport, the airplane should be 500 feet above traffic pattern altitude. Once the aircraft has cleared the traffic pattern by approximately two miles, a shallow descent should be started down to the traffic pattern altitude, in this case of 1,000 feet. Then a right turn entered to enter the traffic pattern on a 45 degree angle. Here we are coming from the same direction as we saw on the sectional chart. As we approach the airport, we're 500 feet above pattern altitude, which puts the airplane at 1,500 feet MSL. Observing traffic in the area by looking out the window is a good idea when entering the traffic pattern. Actually, it's a great idea, but one drawback about crossing the traffic pattern at 1,500 feet above ground level or 500 feet above the traffic pattern in this example, large and turbine-powered aircraft will be flying in the traffic pattern at 1,500 feet AGL, versus 1,000 feet AGL for small aircraft like this Piper Warrior. And in this case, if there was a jet aircraft coming inbound or on the downwind leg, we could be in its path. So the recommendation, add an additional 500 feet to the altitude that we would cross the airport. So cross the airport at 2,000 feet AGL versus 1,500. In this example, we'll say jet traffic is non-existent. So we'll stay at 1,500 feet until we're two miles past the traffic pattern, and then a descent to traffic pattern altitude of 1,000 feet can be initiated. As the aircraft approaches traffic pattern altitude, a right turn can be initiated, but it's best to look out the window to the right to check for traffic before turning. And when in the traffic pattern, it's always a very good idea to maintain a visual awareness looking for other traffic because there may be aircraft in the pattern not using a radio, Maybe it's not equipped, or they're just not using it, or they're on the wrong frequency, or you're on the wrong frequency. Position reports in the traffic pattern are up to the pilot. The color of aircraft and type of aircraft can also be used in the call along with the tail number, but not in place of the tail number. And ignore the tail number on the side of the airplane. We're in the United States, but that's not a U.S. registered airplane. I know that. Here is what a radio call would sound like in this example. Marco Island traffic. Warrior 784 Tango Charlie, three miles east on a 45 degree entry, runway 17. And also stating the aircraft's altitude in the radio call is also helpful to other pilots. And on this heading, this is going to aim the aircraft for a midfield downwind on this 45 degree entry. And from this angle, we can easily look to the left and see any aircraft that may be departing the airport or turning crosswind or turning downwind. And this approximate heading would be flown until the aircraft is approximately one half to one mile from the runway when a right turn would then be made to enter the downwind leg. This type of traffic pattern entry is recommended when the traffic pattern is quite busy. When the airport traffic pattern is busy, the previous example is often used. When not busy, this method can be used cautiously, which is known as the alternate midfield entry, which is shown on the right side of the screen. One significant difference of this entry type is the aircraft flies over the airport and enters the downwind at pattern altitude. And as seen from the note, the aircraft using this entry method should yield to the preferred 45 degree and downwind traffic and then turn downwind. And this is what it looks like. If the traffic pattern is not busy and we're not conflicting with other traffic, the airport can be overflown at pattern altitude and a left turn made directly to the downwind leg. This is what that would look like from inside the airplane. As we approach perpendicular to the runway, the aircraft is at pattern altitude, in this case 1,000 feet. And we're looking towards the downwind leg to make sure that there's no traffic coming. A radio call could be made here. 
Marco Island Traffic, Warrior 784 Tango Charlie, entering midfield crosswind, runway 17. And remember to always look for traffic. Think of this as approaching a busy intersection and the traffic to your right is not going to see you or may not stop. And when the aircraft is the appropriate distance from the runway, the left turn can be made to enter the downwind leg. As mentioned in the previous video, the aircraft would maintain traffic pattern altitude through this point until approximately a beam the touchdown point, which was right there, and then a shallow descent would be started. Those are two basic ways to enter an airport traffic pattern. What about exiting an airport traffic pattern? For that, there are also two basic ways. The first method is to depart straight out and continue straight out climbing above traffic pattern altitude. The second method is once traffic pattern altitude is reached on the departure leg, make a 45 degree turn to the left. In this case, it's a left turn because it's a left traffic pattern. If it was a right hand traffic pattern, a right turn would be made. For a straight out departure, in this case, the aircraft would be climbed to 1000 feet and instead of turning crosswind, continue straight and continue climbing to the desired altitude. And once at an altitude that's clear of traffic, a turn on course can be made, as well as a radio call on the common traffic advisory frequency. When exiting the pattern with a 45 degree left turn in this case, wait until the aircraft is at pattern altitude, look in the direction of the turn to make sure there's no traffic, then make the 45 degree turn and continue the climb. Always be aware of other aircraft entering the traffic pattern and be sure to use the radio. Using the common traffic advisory frequency or CTAF helps improve safety as well as the observance of a standard traffic pattern. Two airport traffic pattern entry and exit types have both been demonstrated. This video covers the basics. To get even more specific information on airport traffic patterns, consult the airplane flying handbook and also advisory circular 90-66B, which will also be linked in the description.